Hi students! We've been looking at multiplying polynomials recently and today we're going to look at something called special products. These are three situations where we have some special things that happen when we try and do some multiplications and it's good to recognize the patterns that are happening because they can save us time later and also because they can help us identify certain patterns later on. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at three different scenarios so we can see what these special products are. The first is the sum and difference of terms. All right, the example I want to show you is f plus L times F minus L. If you've seen another instructor do this, they might use X and Y or A and B instead of F and L, but I use F because it represents the first term in each one and L to represent the last term. I'm choosing the letters that I want to represent the variables so that they reflect what they actually represent, which hopefully makes things easier. Now, if we were to go through and FOIL this out, we would get the following. The first terms gives us f times f, which is f squared. The outer terms, f times negative l, is going to be minus fl. The inner terms, l times f, is either LF or FL. I'm going to write FL because I want these terms to be written similarly. And then the last product, L times negative L, is going to be minus L squared. And if you look at the like terms, you'll notice that they end up canceling out because we've got a negative FL and a positive FL. So in the end, we just get F squared minus L squared. And so what this means is that if we have the sum of two terms times the difference of those terms, instead of foiling everything out, we can just take the first term and square it minus the last term squared. It's like a recipe. It tells us how to get to the answer much more quickly than going through the process of foiling and then combining like terms. This can be used whenever we have a sum of two terms times a difference. So for example, if we have x plus 4 times x minus 4, instead of going through and foiling everything out, first, outer, inner, last, we can just take the first term and square it. x squared is x squared. And then minus the last term squared. 4 squared is 16. And that is our answer. All right. I'm going to move on to the other two special products. If you want practice with these, and you're going to want practice with them, please just click on the linked videos below so that you can see all sorts of examples. The next thing we're going to look at is actually two of them, but they're going to be named the same way. This is the square of a binomial. So if we have a binomial like f plus l and we're squaring it, well when we square something that's just multiplying it by itself. So this means f plus l times f plus l. Now again we can go through the process of foiling this out and we're going to do that once but then we're going to see that there's actually a shortcut. So let's FOIL it out, F-O-I-L. The product of the first terms is going to give us F squared. The product of the outer terms, F times L, gives us FL. The product of the inner terms, L times F, can also be written as FL. And then the product of the last terms gives us L squared. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any canceling terms like we had before, but we can combine these. FL plus FL is 2FL, 
And so we end up getting f squared plus 2fl plus l squared. So if we ever have a binomial f plus l squared, or if we have a binomial f plus l multiplied by itself, instead of going through the process of foiling everything out, we can take the first term and square it, we can take the last term and square it, and then we can also take double the product of the terms. So that's two times the product of the first and last term. Let me show you how this works. Let's take a look at x plus 4 times x plus 4. This is a binomial being multiplied by itself or being squared. So we can use this formula or this recipe. It says take the first term and square it. x squared is x squared. We're also, I'm going to jump ahead, going to have to square the last term. 4 squared is 16. So we're going to have a 16 over there. And then in the middle, we have to double the product of the terms. Well, the product of the terms, x times 4, is 4x. And if we double that, that gives us 8x. So that middle term is going to be 8x. I know that right now it might seem a little bit confusing because you're used to using FOIL. So you might even prefer to use FOIL over this thing that I'm calling a shortcut, this recipe. But remember, the first time you try a recipe, it's usually kind of difficult if you're cooking something. But over and over again, when you make it many, many times, it becomes really easy. You can do it from memory. You can do it without even thinking. Um, during the pandemic, I have been baking bread, and I am now to the point where I don't even need to look at a recipe. I know how much flour, how much yeast, how much salt, how much water. I know the temperature. I know the cooking times. So get practice with these, and they will become easier. Now there's one more we're going to look at. It's just a little bit different. Instead of f plus l squared, it's going to be f minus l squared. So we're going to have a difference instead of a sum. We can write this out as f minus l times f minus l. And what I want you to do is I want you to go through the process of foiling this out on your own. I want you to combine like terms, and I want you to figure out what the recipe or the formula is going to be. So take a moment to pause the video, work it out, and when you're done, unpause it and check to see if you got it right. All right, have you tried it? Hopefully you got f squared minus 2fl plus l squared. It is effectively exactly the same as the last formula, except we have a negative here, a subtraction, instead of a positive term, an addition. And these match up with what we have in the beginning of each of these problems. So f plus l squared is going to have a positive 2fl. f minus l squared is going to have a negative 2fl. So please look at some of the examples, go through them, get practice working with these, because it's going to help in several situations later on in this class, and especially in some future classes.